Hello and welcome everybody. I would like to open today's webinar for Software One. And uh, without further ado, I give the floor to the, on, the one and only Zoran, who will present the scope and the purposes of today's event. Stoyan, thanks a lot. And uh, I would like to thanks to all participants who have an uh, opportunity to enjoy uh, today uh, our webinars. So the main topic for today is uh, Azure Security Services. And we will have a really, really great uh, story and topic to cover uh, today. Sorry, I forgot to introduce myself. I'm Zoran Janovac. I'm country leader for the Software One for the for the Serbia. Uh, we will have uh, today a really, really amazing uh, agenda. So we will cover the several things as Azure basic security topics. We will cover the security guidance and we will have the higher overview of the uh, governance, risk, compliance, security, operation, identity, network, administration, storage, info protection, and lot of, lot of, lot of great, uh, uh, great things. Uh, I just want to mention to the all participants that uh, Software One is the uh, uh, number one Microsoft uh, partner in a several in our several uh, uh, areas, and we are covering the uh, uh, all, all, all continents. Uh, now, uh, I would like just to say a, a few words on the Serbian uh, for the Serbian customer. Pre svega želim da vam se zahvalim na vremenu koji ste izvojili za za današnji webinar. Biće jako jako puno danas zanimljivih tema iz ove oblasti koja je zaista interesanta, naročito u nekom ovom posljednjem vremenu i naravno molim vas da, da, sva, da sva pitanja koje imate možete stavljati u, u message box, kasnije možemo komunicirati putem mail ili putem bilo kojih drugih, drugih načina komunikacije. Uh, also, we would like to, to, to have this uh, webinar very live, so uh, all questions you can raise on the, on the, on the message, message box and we will try to reply to you to, uh, very promptly. Uh, now, uh, uh, I would like to give uh, again uh, 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 my word to the, to the Stoyan, just to introduce uh, himself a little, and after that we are going to the, our main guy, uh, today, Ilija Ilijev, who is Cloud Data Center consultant and really, really a huge specialist for the security. Stojan, word is yours. Thank you. Wow, Zoran, I, you never cease to amaze me. I, I yeah. cannot dare to repeat the musicality of your speech. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, so a few words in Bulgarian for our Bulgarian um, participants today. Здравейте, казвам се Стоян Лилов от офиса на Software Run Bulgaria, който вече наброява над 150 човека след придобиването от нас на, софтуер, на Predica и HeleCloud. В този смисъл очаквайте много повече и по-качествени събития от нас, защото вече разполагаме с особено много компетентни и дейни местни консултанти, особено в областта на сигурността. За нас ще бъде приятно, ако имате въпроси по време на семинара или след това, да отговорим и да се опитаме да задоволим всяко ваше любопитство. Окей, okay, so I guess uh, that's enough in both local languages. So I give the word to Ilija Ilijev, who is the star of today's event. Ilija, take it away. <laughs> okay, thank you, Stian. Thank you, Zoran. <clears throat> So hello everyone. Uh, it's really a pleasure to me for me to, to be here on this uh, webinar. Uh, I really expect uh, this webinar to be really interactive. Uh, you help me to even more reduce my pressure uh, because we know uh, in every uh, or such events there is a you know kind of pressure into presenter. But, uh, you know, you can help me a lot. Please raise your questions into the chat. I hope um, Stoyan or Zoran will help me and uh, help me and raise my attention to all the questions. And uh, we really would like to, to make it interactive. I, I don't, do not want to speak like a robot here, just uh, saying how great uh, technologies uh, we will check in the next, uh, you know, 140 or 50 slides. Don't be scared. I hope I will be sliding really smooth through them uh, and sometimes really quickly, maybe. 
uh, if I already say something, maybe I will not even stop on some slides. I will just keep them. Uh, of course, you can you feel free to to just uh, raise your questions uh, for the slides, which uh, I let's say um, uh, didn't stop much. If you have anything uh, which is uh, let's say uh, be more interesting for you or it, it grabs your attention, because I have. Uh, I think uh, Microsoft prepared a really nice presentation and it's not secret, it's not my presentation, it's Microsoft presentation with all their um, you know, services and technologies behind uh, lots of different topics. And um, really we will try to cover all of them. So uh, I would really like to be in, in help here and uh, to make this uh, webinar really, really useful for you. So um, we are talking about Azure security as my colleagues already mentioned. Hello, uh, sorry for interrupting. Can you hear me? Hello, Ilya. We seem to have a problem, no sound. Well, uh, and I was muted for song. Yeah, you were muted about uh, three slides ago. So uh, if you don't mind, please. Can repeat. you please tell me next time when I... S I tried to tell you in the chat, but <laughs> anyway, yeah, please yeah. unmute yourself. Please. I don't see the chat. Sorry, I'm checking the presentation. Yeah, uh, three I... slides ago, you can start again for our viewers. <laughs> <laughs> so I have to start everything from the beginning, right? I no, mean... no, no. One, this one was okay. Second one. But wait, uh, so if I didn't mute myself, is there a possibility someone else mute me? I mean, can you please at least guide me when I just stopped to uh, be audible? Uh, uh, somewhere around four minutes four minutes 40. okay so it's now around nine did you hurt my introduction then or yeah not? your introduction is okay your introduction was okay okay uh, so first slide is okay starting strange. from second now is okay the customers also uh, yeah. sorry, sorry about that sorry, sorry about interrupting please once again really unmute yeah. unmute and let me know if there's uh, something like uh, my audio or video uh, I really don't see <clears throat> and everything. now everything's fine. We can hear you loud and clear. Let's use this break then to drink some coffee. So, um, yeah, as I started to mention uh, in really, um, in so, um, ex uh, fast, uh, growing, uh, and really, uh, fast, uh, expanding, uh, cloud environment, we need to be, stay, stay on, on, on good shape with our security. And around, um, uh, let's say, all the already known tools in uh, Azure Cloud, like Azure Security Center, which uh, is there from for a very long time, uh, we, we have seen uh, that Microsoft are really building more and more capabilities 
uh, as an addition uh, service uh, to to our uh, to our our already existing uh, tools let's say uh, so in this situation um, how they uh, how the security is built uh, in, into the cloud um, environment. So we know the traditional approach and we, we now have to move to this um, cloud security approach. What means uh, traditional approach? Well, the security boundaries was all around our networking security, right? I mean, the first defense after our walls of the data center on on-premise you know, site, was really our wall, but after the walls is starting with our networking. And what this means, I mean, the main perimeter on which we are building our security and our security strategy, it's starting with the network perimeters. But this is not all, um, this is no, no more uh, the, the case, you know, when we are talking about uh, cloud security, um, we're moving and shifting the focus on different layers, which basically uh, are already taken by uh, our um, cloud providers. And in, in this light, it, it's very well uh, seen that, uh, you know, not all the security stuff around um, our um, services are, are our responsibilities. Part of this is already taken by the cloud provider, but still, are we responsible in some ways for some um, security stuff uh, in the cloud? Yes, we are. And this is a very common mistake here from, from the customer side. You know, uh, We have to move to the cloud just because our cloud provider, in our case, uh, Microsoft Cloud, uh, Azure Cloud, they're giving us really good protection. No, that's totally not correct. And it's really bad if you think that Microsoft will fully protect all your environment from, from the beginning to the end. There is still responsibility, which we have to uh, uh, be aware that we are responsible. And uh, this is why we're, we're calling it um, shared responsibility or sh uh, shared security, uh, shared security responsibilities because uh, there is definitely services which uh, they're protecting us from, uh, uh, for, but uh, there is also different stuff which we have to handle and be aware of that they're, they're existing. Now, uh, let's take a look on some uh, best practices because, uh, uh, you know, not everything will uh in this uh, webinar will be only around uh, all the services but there will, i want to share also some good practices which i uh, think is uh, really important for us and um one of the the biggest uh, challenges around uh, you know the best practices is to really understand where our um, criticality of our services is uh, really focused and uh, to really understand your um, quote the security posture you have to really think and uh, analyze everything around your uh, um, azure around your security and you have to um, create a, a one a primary focus on what you're doing there and uh, really uh, analyze how to do it correctly so that's why um, as a best practice is always you know to, to create some plan what is important for us and what is not so important, or let's say we can put it, uh, put these uh, things under some general uh, stuff which we can improve uh, later on uh, uh, after our uh, maturity of using the cloud and the security grows up. Because as you know, uh, well, maybe some of you uh, never heard this word, but maturity and uh, the way how you're using uh, uh, cloud and uh, the security and what which benefits you 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 can um, use from all of the security uh, stuff there it's really showing how how mature you're in in such areas and uh, as you can see there is a uh, lots of uh, different areas around which uh, we can uh, focus and um, around which we can build our security. Uh, I will not uh, go through all of them, but uh, we can see uh, mainly governments, uh, we can see administration stuff, we can see uh, some uh, information protection and identity stuff. And uh, really we have to understand that uh, identity 
is basically the new security perimeter on which we have to focus on into this cloud uh, on into these days you know around when we're talking about clouds and the security in the cloud uh really I, I want to repeat identity is the new security boundaries we have to really improve our identity in order to make sure that everything is really in good shape there in the cloud so saying that uh i want to stress on on the fact compliant doesn't mean security why because compliance uh is let's say uh to follow some uh, security um uh best practices which uh in, in our cases uh, you know uh, they, they they're applied because of some requirements from from some um from some of our vendors um so, or with some products which we are basically using but on the other hand the good security um um posture on our environment is something else which means you know the level or uh, of acceptable level uh, which uh, around which we are building our security and the risk which we can accept or neglect for for a certain period of time so basically uh, full um, full to cover everything from 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 the bottom to the top uh, around each pillar of the security is really one good uh, uh, you know situation which we really want to cover but it's not always the, the case right i mean sometimes some requirements they cannot be applied to our en environments for some for some reason let's say um we cannot always say that it's correct to apply certain security uh, rules or not apply them just because there is a good practice there from microsoft no it, it should be um uh, aligned with our business and we have to listen what our stakeholders are saying and what they're talking about when we're talking about uh, security and uh, how to uh, really um, protect our environment so really important. Uh, i'm sorry i'm, I'm yes. sorry Ilya. please take your breath i want to ask a question <laughs> okay uh, yeah uh, since you mentioned about improving identity uh, this is something i've been failing to do for the last 50 years uh, but uh, probably you mean identity protection and account management and my question here is what's your personal opinion is because um, if we make a site absolutely secure everybody knows that the users will have great difficulty in accessing it so yeah. it will result in great productivity loss and uh, a lot of frustration uh, do you know or how do you actually measure this and what is this uh, golden line in between perfect security and usability yeah nice question uh, by the way thank you for making this interaction with me i'm really feel let, let's say more confident uh, to extend uh, some specific risks. well the idea is around identity is really to protect our users and uh, how we should do it is um uh, let's say um different um uh, you know dif differs between the companies right because we know you know if we apply let's say really long um, uh, requirements for the passwords let's say ask our users yeah you have to put maybe 12 13 or even 32 uh, characters long complex password they will start you know repeating uh, making some um, you know a recurrence of uh, some digits or something like this you know it will be no more secure because they will start write down uh, their passwords on on uh, papers attach it to the monitor and yeah this is uh, the biggest security breach we, which we can have uh, that's why microsoft they really um, improved the, the way how you can log into your um, systems uh, and really this uh, all this um, around single sign-ons and uh, you know stuff like um, uh, let's say using pins in order to log into your computers that these small things which not all the uh, users are thinking about oh that's really great you know because imagine i mean if you have to remember only one password is one case but imagine if you have to remember from each uh, of the websites or sharepoints or applications different passwords it really 
makes the usage crazy. You know, I mean, it's not even possible for you to, to remember all these passwords. That's why uh, with uh, stuff like a single sign-on, uh, with all these um, small things which are doing our life easier, uh, we are seeing um, not the productivity loss, but even a productivity increase. Why? Because um, it only requires you to authenticate only when the, let's say, the platform thinks you have to really enter your MFA, for example. Uh, but all, all of this stuff are hidden behind some conditional access policies, which we will uh, talk about later. And uh, basically, um, yeah, they, Microsoft already think about this. And later in the in the presentation, I I, I believe that you will see more, um, many of these um, uh, cool stuff around uh, entity protection and. Uh, um, let's say how we are defending our um, uh, users or um, yeah, basically users uh, from you know thieves and uh, all the you know the threats out out there. And uh, again, to 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 keep the good shape uh, of our companies, you know, and to not lose the productivity. Uh, so thank you very much for the question. Yeah. Yeah, I just want to elaborate further on the question with uh, one. Uh, while we are at this point, uh, what is your personal opinion? Uh, because in the last year we have seen the rise, or more accurately said, the return of hardware tokens for single sign-on and authentication. What is your personal opinion on that? Is it a good trend? Is it going to continue? Or maybe not such a good thing? Of my personal opinion? Uh... I really do do not, uh, let's say, like to have many, uh, you know, many um, ways to authenticate. And I'm trying to always, let's say, use uh, the the standards, the, the best standards, let's say. And to, for example, to use MFA uh, from Microsoft Authenticator, for example, Microsoft Authenticator apps, which for me is really great tool. And I'm always trying to put. Um, uh, everything behind MFA and into this app. Of course, they always saying, don't put all your eggs in one basket, right? Uh, but uh, still, uh, I mean, uh, this is something which really uh, helps you and to, to improve your productivity because imagine if you're moving and you have to speak with different customers, you have, uh, uh, for example, uh, as I have access to many different environments, you know, it's really making your work um, uh, hard, not very product productive, uh, just because uh, let's imagine uh, if all, every customer requires me to have, uh, let's say, such token, then what I will do at the end, I will start placing, you know, these tokens, uh, some names uh, in order to remember to, to which token from which customer is ca came in from. And that's why I, I really prefer um, the, the, the cool stuff around um, uh, the the access which we can grant to to some business partners like um, uh, for example our my identity which is uh, let's say microsoft uh, you know provided from microsoft it can be reused let's say because if you invite me with my um, work email address to some other tenant then i can continue to use the same um, username and password with same mfa which I log into to my account into each environment. And this is how basically uh, my account is always protected at the uh, top level of uh, the, uh, at the top level. I mean, with uh, all the required, required um, uh, protection like MFA and uh, yeah, long passwords and expiration dates, uh, which has to be rotated occasionally. So yeah, it's, it makes your life easier and then you can give more of your uh, time uh, to, to helping the customers and not fighting with, uh, you know, finding the correct token in order to walk into that environment, right? I hope this answers to your question. <laughs> more or less, <laughs> okay. <laughs> uh, actually, yes, yes, yes. It's okay. uh, like a single point of accumulation yes i was thinking about hardware tokens like uh, uh, identity cards uh, ub key usb keys with fingerprint access and so on whether they are a good thing or not but in a way you already answered this 
yeah yeah as i mentioned for for me using many different you know working for many different customers it's really a burden which uh, stops me and reduce my productivity yeah, uh, okay correct. so yeah so here yeah uh, in this um slide uh i want to stress out a little bit uh let's say about our uh main topics uh on the left side we can see some uh they call it basics uh but they're really you know tools and uh, uh services which um, really build uh, the the whole uh fun, fun, foundation of uh security without uh, we, we, with which if we don't have them uh let's say security does not exist and of course uh on the right side some uh you know more um structured on different pillars uh security stuff like uh, governance and uh risk and compliance uh we will also uh, pay attention to some security operations identity the topic which we already uh, touch uh network uh, containment administration and um uh, some uh, info protection and uh, storage and on the top uh, i don't want to skip these uh, two elements um, we'll check and um, overlook our let's say main tools or services around which uh, microsoft are basically building the whole security portfolio on which i hopefully believe that every company will try to build their security and their um, you know security perimeter with all these uh, uh services because the, the they are they are uh, are really uh, cool stuff which you can use uh without overpaying for let's say for some uh, for some stuff and and at the end but not uh, you know less important is our security center which uh, with each year we we can see how it's uh, continues to evolve more and more with uh, more cool stuff and even uh, nowadays uh, lots of uh, in preview uh, things which we can see there of course they they're changing about the the you know the whole shape of uh, all their uh, you know structure how uh, their service are, are look like uh, but of course without change there is no there is no progress right i mean we all have to try to 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 move forward to progress and to evolve uh, our ourselves and also our security uh, because we don't have to forget ego is our enemy right <laughs> so uh, ego is really uh, is something which can destroy our company from from inside you know one wrong choice uh, of our security specialists can ruin how our business and uh, our reputation on the market now here i want to check some um stuff around uh, our uh, attackers basically uh, the people or um, all the stuff which are happening uh, around uh, you know all these bad guys what they're doing how they're doing it and i really want to to to, to point one specific thing here um yeah the numbers are just numbers it's not so uh, uh, expensive to to as you can see to to do a ddos attack or uh, to to do some ransomware attack uh, against um, some specific uh, uh, computer or uh, uh, server uh, the main idea here is to really understand one thing the attackers they never try to attack all the potential points in into your environment they're focusing on single uh, vulnerabilities which exist out there and with closing all these doors with all these vulnerabilities which we already uh, we, we have to be aware or at least uh, if we are not we should be uh, we are reducing the return of investment for them right 
I mean, it's all about return of investment because um, if we uh, mitigate some vulnerabilities on some server, then they are sp spending more money in order to find uh, uh, some, um, you know, uh, ways to really um, penetrate our environment. And this is how uh, it's getting more difficult for them and return of investment is go dropping drastically with every and each resolved, you know, um, uh, hole which we are having in our environment. So transformation to the quotes. So it's it's really important to understand and to really uh, prepare uh, the whole design from the very beginning and to put really understanding which tools we will use and where we are going, uh, you know, where, where we are seeing ourselves after one month, uh, half a year, one year, or even five years. You know, security is evolving. It's never, you know, to say, ah, we are good with uh, security, we are done. You know, that's it. Full stop. We're done, <laughs> right? Hmm. It's it's never it's never it's never like this. I mean, it's always evolving. It's always growing. You you, you never have to stop. Uh, you know, asking yourself where I can improve myself, and really, what you can start and what you can do as a as a really first step is to really educate yourself. Ask yourself, what do I know about these services? You know, what do uh, what do I know about the cloud? what we can do in order to further push our security into different levels. And uh, then, you know, the, it, it's making really big difference because understanding where you are and where you're going and uh, basically understanding the whole uh, environment which you, you have out there, it's really vital for, for the growth and uh, for the... Um, really uh, for the securing of your environment because all right we have to accept one one really important thing is it's, it's not only about protecting uh, servers right it's not only protecting computers uh, we can see that today we have uh, lots of uh, bring your devices which are part of our environment in, in, uh, iot stuff and you know they're part of our day-to-day uh, -day, uh, business, part of our, let's say, uh, occasional life, you know, they're part of um, our uh, uh, normal extension to our company, right? We are working from home and uh, we don't have to forget that uh, even my home is a part of our uh, company environment right now, right? Because my computer is here and I'm connected to some um, public, uh, or let's say not so public, but uh, I'm connected to my ISP, which of course I have to be protected with some VPNs, you know, and all this stuff we have to really be aware of that they're happening there. And, you know, at the end, even Office 365, you know, all, all these applications which we are uh, signing there, you know, they're again um, some kind of risk for us you know, all this uh, software as a service, uh, uh, but still they're part of our environment and we have to really see the broadened picture of, uh, you know, our company. We started here, but now with today, the, uh, fast changing worlds, we are de definitely operating into many, many different places and uh, into many different uh, devices. Uh, yeah, so I already mentioned a few times how basically we see the old versus, you know, the modern way of securing our environment. And don't get me wrong, you know, this doesn't mean that once we move to the cloud, yes, we can stop protecting our network. No, <laughs> I mean, we have to fully understand how they can uh, cooperate and really, really work together and uh, we really we really have to understand that uh, the extension of our classical or uh, of our network on premise network is really extended to the cloud network uh, with um, moving uh, forwards uh, to the cloud right 
and uh, vice versa. If we're fully operating only into the cloud, we still have to think about how to protect our users, which are still on the on-premise side, right? They're not some virtual um, uh, person that, or some robot staying into the cloud, right? They're uh, humans, they're working there behind their computers, and they're part of this whole picture of, about how this uh, networking. And now, uh, shared responsibility. As I, let's say, already stressed out about all this stuff, it's really incorrect, it's really wrong to think that Azure is fully protecting you and, and they're mitigating all security threats which you're having there. So we can see uh, from the right to the left, on-premise infrastructure as a service, platform as a service, and software as a service, how these different uh, you know, infrastructure or services, how they're uh, you know, working and on which level, which type of um, protections we have to apply and which, who, is, who is taking care about the, our protection, right? I mean, uh, on the right side, we can see on-premise. It's totally understandable, or, or I hope that you, you agree with me. If not, <laughs> share it in the, in the chat. Let me know why you're not agree with that. Uh, it's our responsibility. We're making, maintaining our uh, physical data center, our physical network, our host, and everything else. I, I'm not even talking about operation level and the stuff which are about that. But we are always have to be um, protecting. We are always have to be, you know, aware and knowing how these, um, uh, you know, environments uh, are have to be operated, you know, and how they have to be protected. So it's really, you know, shared responsibility. When moving to the cloud, we have to talk about more and more about the, 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 those stuffs. Uh, and of course, um, definitely, you know, with the different services, we have different, uh, let's say, transformational uh, approaches which we can have in order to mitigate uh, certain threats or um, transfer the, the responsibility to someone else, right? Because um well maybe some of the companies they want to tra transfer the, the responsibilities uh, to the cloud uh, provider but then they have to understand you know that they have to use uh, software as a service let's say but but even even uh, with software as a service um there is some old applications which they they cannot always run as a software as a service right and then it's coming into place yeah i have to build vm in order to bring my uh, heavy monolith uh, applications into the clouds just because I can I I cannot or I'm not ready to transfer um, all these um, uh, application stuff uh, to the fully um, cloud application and uh, it's you know uh, engaging uh, lots of um, you know development and you know it's not always correct that you have to do it immediately, but at least you know your roadmap. You, you know that, yes, I will be moving to infrastructure as a code, but then my plan is to, let's say, modernize and optimize my application to even further be pushed to platform or even why not to software as a service. And this is how basically we're shifting a little bit to the left, uh, the security responsibilities, uh, and we're pushing it to the uh, cloud provider, but still, you know, uh, are we ready and do we know how to do it? This is really important. Our strategy and really our um, awareness how everything should be configured in order to be properly um, placed into our uh, environment. So um, some ex existing techniques like, uh, yeah, I will not go through all of them, but uh, you know, we, we are aware what threats are there, right? I mean, they're out there, we are fighting with them. Most of the, the people who attend this webinar, maybe they already know some security um, basics or even they struggle with some, some problems uh, around their securities or they're having already some issues. Uh, but really, um, some, 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 um, 
some threats are still out there, even if we are talking about cloud. We don't have to forget about this. And we, we really have to think how to um, modernize and optimize further uh, all of our environment. Uh, by the way, Stuyan, uh, am I still visible well? Because it's getting a little bit dark here and maybe I have to turn my lights. If so, let me know when I have to do it, right? You are perfectly visible. Okay. Everything, great. everything fine. Everything. Uh, just, 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 okay. yeah, yeah, just to say, uh, say to the customers, if you have any question or concern, you can raise your 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 question in the in the in the message box. Yeah. Great. Uh, until you're announcing that, I will be super happy to prepare my whites here, just in case I disappear because of uh, low visibility. Uh, and well, uh, just a moment. Okay. Uh, sorry for that. I didn't think so far <laughs> about the lights. And uh, yeah, so the threats are there. And yeah, we have to really understand and have a good, good understanding where we are and what we are doing. Now, let's uh, check uh, what Microsoft Azure is uh, providing us as an infrastructure and uh, where they are at the moment. For many of, uh, of us, we already know uh, uh, the data centers, the regions, I don't think they grow up a lot with, in the last few years, but still, you know, 45, uh, 40, uh, 54 regions, that's, that's a lot. And, uh, you know, this whole massive uh, fiber, <coughs> fiber optic network, it's uh, just, uh, great to have it there it's just great to use it and really um uh, yes we can use it but then how we have to be more protected and how to even uh, uh use the best uh, you know benefits from having such a big uh, network uh, topology on on our site you know we're ready and uh, uh, you're ready to be used and ready to be utilized from our environment and uh, yeah, and why is why it's so important this big network? Uh, well, uh, it's important because, as we know, you know, Microsoft is uh, really big; they're huge. And with all these um, telemetries, which they they can correct um, uh, from all the different um, uh, you know companies and individuals from let's say even playstations users from users which are using um, their laptops computers you know they're, they're gaining really big and massive you know uh, data which they're analyzing and um why they're analyzing this because they, they can see trends right this is the maybe the most important things trends um trends what is trends for us and why it's so important to have them for few, uh, for few reasons. Uh, once they see all these DDoS attacks or some phishing or all the threats which are happening to the normal users or even to some uh, companies and uh, some big enterprise environment, they basically put their, um, they, they bring all together into this uh, really massive and uh, amazingly big um, uh, in artificial intelligence uh, uh, data uh, 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 about this data which they're having and that they applying this artificial intelligence over that data, over that telemetries. And why these telemetries are so important that based on these uh, all different activities, then they can really reduce uh, the amount of uh, false positive alarms for us, right? And this is really beneficial for us because uh, we, as a, a administrator of our uh, Azure tenants or even our enterprise environment, which is built around Azure or even hybrid cloud or even multi-cloud, which means we can operate in, into Azure, AWS, uh, on-prem, uh, GCP, you know, we can be everywhere. But uh, at the end, one, graph can overwatch all our, our activities, right? If we are connected to this uh, intelligent graph and our environment is, you know, is uh, feeding this um, uh, security graph with data and telemetries, 
then definitely we can achieve more and more with their um, with their intelligence. And uh, what this uh, security intelligence is doing for us is basically, uh, as you can see here on this slide, I really like it. Uh, on the bottom, we can see all, not all, but let's say <laughs> one really small part of our environment, which of course uh, consists of really uh, basic and really, uh, I mean, stuff without, with, which we cannot even operate uh, uh, to, today's, like, uh, you know, Azure Active Directory, you know, all these connectors uh, to, through, um, through, through this um, data collective and analysis, which they can really um, take a look into our environment, do analysis and really push only the important stuff, which are matters. Why I'm saying which are matters? Because imagine if you're having your uh, SOC team, your, your security operations team, and they have uh, lots of different awards from different environments like Office 365, like computers, like users' uh, alarms, and you know everything is coming somewhere. And as we know, right? Uh, I I want to see here agree or disagree with this statement uh, in the chat, but as we know every and each security persons what they're saying is always i need all the logs ah come on really <laughs> do we really need all to collect all the security logs no come on i mean yes they have to be analyzed but at the end what is hammering or at least what i'm seeing uh, today is you know with uh, working with different customers is that you know they're having uh, one system they're having second system third even fourth i mean they're covered with so many different um, you know systems they're paying for licenses you know they're splitting their um, operational stuff everywhere and at the end uh, one person doesn't know what the other person is doing. One uh, uh, department doesn't know what uh, totally the other department is doing. And it's a big mess. I mean, it's a big mess. And what really we, we would like to see is uh, how we can basically reduce all these um, amounts, uh, all this pressure over our IT staffs. And here where security, you know, Microsoft Security Graph or Graph API, uh, I can I saw it in many different uh, ways uh, written, but uh, Security Graph API, uh, the intelligence behind this is really think the amount engineers are spending analyzing uh, not words stuff and only focusing on mitigating uh, already um uh, stuff which are happening into our environments and uh, to 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 try to um close some uh, uh, you know holes into our defense and of course um uh, around this you know it's it's all about uh, at the end uh, some uh, reporting right uh, whatever our soc is doing or some operational um, team is doing they're expecting to see some uh, report at the, at the end, uh, which they have to prepare, um, pre prepare and send to, to the key uh, stakeholders, like you know, uh, some some CEOs or CISOs, which they really would like to see. Yeah, are we where we have to be or not? So, are we protected? Are we compliant? Are we, you know, what is our status? And this is also about auditing and reporting. Uh, I, I really uh, would like to ask you, uh, go and visit all these um, uh, hyperlinks here. There is a lot of uh, you know, uh, information around the securities and uh, you should be really um, aware with them. Now, uh, when we were talking about security at the beginning, I mentioned really we, we don't have to forget about compliance. What is compliance and uh, how much different uh, industry stand standards are covered there as um, uh, ready to use um, standards, which we can apply with a few clicks and boom, we, we, have, we have it. It's working. It's uh, starting to, uh, to gain really uh, visibility into our environment, starting to analyze and to prepare really nice um, uh, outcomes, how and what we have to do in order to be prepared for ISO uh, 27001 or uh, 27018 or, you know, stuff like this. 
Uh, and at the beginning, it, it was few of them, right? Uh, I mean, people which uh, really uh, are working with Azure um, uh, for, for a very long time, uh, <laughs> they have to agree with me that uh, there wasn't uh, so many of these uh, compliantly, compliance and regulatory stuff, right? Uh, but today, uh, we, we can see some of them. And I believe, I, I strongly uh, thinking that uh, I, I I think there are more here, but uh, for more information, um, uh, I'm really asking you to go to the page, official page of Microsoft and really check all these, uh, you know, compliance standards, which you can uh, use in order to make your environment really compliant. And of course, we, we were talking about, uh, you know, standards like PCI DSS, which for me is uh, some, something really game changer, uh, like uh, HIPAA, like, um, uh, something else which is really more, you know, uh, used here in uh, Europe, like ISO 27000, you know, these few standards. So SOC as well, you know, really, uh, really, I'm asking you go there, check the really cool stuff which Microsoft um, created. And I'm really uh, asking you don't be scared now. I'm clicking uh, my space and uh, <laughs> yeah, this simple picture is appearing to your <laughs> screens. Yeah, uh, it's simple, right? I mean, there's few services, as you can see, <laughs> only a few of them. Uh, and yes, 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 the stuffs, you know, there is a lot of service. And now what we can see here on this picture, I will just drink some coffee because <laughs> here's a lot of uh, to talk. So everything on this page, which we can see now, is uh, uh, basically it's all reference stuff all around security. As you can see, Microsoft are not talking about only uh, Office 365, right? Which we can see on the right. They're talking about hybrid uh, cloud infrastructure, which uh, consists of our cloud and uh, on-premise. They're talking about IoT stuff, clients, and uh, at the end, you know, uh, SOC, right? Uh, right uh, our security operation center. And you know, how all this stuff are placed together and what is the biggest benefit of having all this under one hood? For me, definitely, I, I think that's the biggest Gain, change it again. Sorry for repeating myself, but this is really uh, changing a lot here. Uh, my understanding about security. Uh, why? Because everything is my, uh, Microsoft. Everything is uh, you know working. Almost everything is working in Azure, and there, there, there are a very uh, good integration of the different services which can be, uh, let's say, built or in some cases not built, but enabled via some licenses um, into our environment. And um, what, what I mean into this, for example, in order to have, uh, let's say some premium uh, stuff like uh, multi-factor authentication for all our users, not for only for Google administrators, as we, we know, they're by default um, protected by MFA, uh, we have to enable some premium licenses, right? Uh, but then what is happening is really that uh, we're uh, gaining really big flexibility and uh, visibility into our um, security posture for some specific uh, specific users, right? Which we already onboarded with such um, premium license. Why? Because then we can ingest our uh, CM system and really understand the uh, the, the way how, how this user is acting into our environment. And really, uh, when, when you see, uh, uh, you know, when you're analyzing as a security expert, just security logins, well, it can mean nothing for us, right? Just normal logging from some countries. And uh, for example, when I'm from VPN, I can appear from two different points uh, in Europe uh, at the same time, right? But th th this, this is a normal behavior, let's say, because, um, you know, the analytics uh, and the artificial intelligence behind all this security stuff, it's really analyzing my behavior and it, it's, it knows that that's something uh, 
uh, that is okay for me. But then what is happening is someday I suddenly walking from some other place of the world and I shut down some server and I, or I have some security breach on some um, uh, some really critical uh, and you know server or environment or computer whatever is there you know and and, and then on place is coming uh, really the uh, the the things which is hypervising and gathering everything uh, uh, under one place and analyzing all, all these actions and it's really our CM system which is Azure Sentinel to, to nowadays so Azure Sentinel is really um, the the tool which I urge you to to go out there to check all these connectors which are created, you know, to, to ingest with data from Azure Active Directory or from some other, you know, uh, environment which are inside of our, uh, you know, on-premise or uh, Azure and to really understand uh, how it's working and to see the benefits because, you know, uh, imagine you're having some uh, curator there uh, and you're doing some security uh, and analyzing, but then you are analyzing, let's say, only the workload from users or from computers or from servers. That's that's not enough, right? It's not giving you the high picture. What you know? What was the pre uh, the precedence of happening? Some incidents, you know, is basically some security warning or some phishing emails for some users. And this is uh, why where you know all the benefits uh, from using only. Uh, Microsoft uh, products are really boosting and improving your environment and really uh, making it um, really a return of your investment even higher and bigger uh, with each day. Of course, I'm not saying don't use all your current environments as you can see in the middle or maybe you don't see, but I will zoom a little bit. Uh, we can see that there is uh, some integration with uh, some other, uh, uh, you know, security appliances like uh, Curator, which I already mentioned, like Cisco, Barracuda, and so on. You know, but once again, you know, they, they're not saying you, uh, telling you don't use it. It's just, you know, um, how they um, place all together in into one picture, you know, and how you can achieve a better security posture with all their products and connectors which they built um, for your usage. Uh, now, next thing which uh, we have to pay attention is, uh, um, you know, really about um, how the security is happening on, on, on the different layers. You know, we saw all these services, but then all these services which are our foundation uh, on top of them are our, let's say, the storages, our networking, our identities, and all our application and, you know, more and more services. And uh, at the end, right, we have to oversee and protect all of this. We have to protect, I mean, each and every aspect of our cloud, of our environment. And uh, we really have to understand how everything is working. So. Security privileges, you know, uh, and um, administration and day-to-day uh, day uh, day -day use of uh, uh, some security, uh, some uh, admins, you know. We don't have to pro um, forget how we're doing uh, protecting such uh, really important accounts, right? And how this uh, privilege uh, access, um, you know, is, uh, is working and how they can, um, let's say how we can uh, mitigate some risk which are connected to, to these uh, uh, users and uh, really how we are separating our environment uh, let's i mean let's do it this way i will move a little bit so as we know uh, our our environment is starting basically with our tenant right i mean I hope that you will not argue here with this. Uh, by the way, is there any questions, Toyan? Because I, Zoran, maybe you see some questions. Maybe I can ask because, you know. Still not. I, still not. Okay. If we have yeah. something, please let me know. Great. So, uh, how we're seeing, uh, you know, security? How how everything uh, should be built here? And uh, everything starts with our enterprise tenant, right? And with our identity, which basically is there it's part of our tenant 
And then uh, what Microsoft um, uh, suggests you as a best practice, don't make it too complicated. Make it simple. Make it work, you know, simple and understandable for you in the way that everyone should be aware of, of the bigger picture. No, I'm not talking about details, but I'm talking about bigger picture because uh, we have to be aware how our enterprise is, you know, um, structured at the top level. Then we have to understand really about management groups, how they're configured out there, and then which subscription is into which management group. And for example, uh, based on analysis of uh, which Microsoft did uh, of all of these customers, uh, you know, which they're using their environment, uh, that they're using Azure, they see this, basically this pattern, which basically says, you know, you have to uh, separate the core services into one, let's say, management group, then create another one, you know, other segment, which is for, let's say, multi-application, or, but we are talking about uh, production stuff, you know, and basically starting the separation between the different environments uh, which we are having out there is basically reducing the uh, the, the the threats, you know, the 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 landscape on which we are having, you know, different uh, threats, you know, right? I mean, uh, our core services like uh, our uh, domain controllers and uh, you know our uh, let's say uh, administrative. Um, uh, stuff they're always like under one hood and then uh let's say we have to open some uh, some additional ports to some uh applications which brings a bigger uh, risk and bigger vulnerabilities uh, to our environment it's good it's definitely good if we try to separate these uh, two environments in order to at least mitigate and reduce the threats uh, the threats under one single tenant or one single application, but not spreading immediately all the risk uh, just with allowing this access to this application to all other uh, application out there in, into our environments. And of course, to our core services, right? <laughs> Who wants uh, to be uh, hit really hard in the core services and just to, to lose everything, you know? Imagine, yeah. uh, imagine someone gains access to your core services and the first thing which he do is uh, boom deleting your backups uh, which are out there in, into your storage account and then you know the ransomware just uh, i will stop here i will not explain you can imagine what will happen i mean you know there's the things <laughs> which we, we we can imagine right i mean most probably every one of you heard about uh, ransomware and what can can happen if you don't have a really nice separation between backups and uh, really production environments. Boom, you're lost. Your environment is totally, you know, I will not say the words, but it's lost. And then your your liability, what is happening with your clients, what is happening with your uh, contractors, with your partners, you're losing, using trust, you're losing uh, revenue, you're losing market share, you're losing everything. At the end, you can suffer from, uh, you know, of course, financial loss are one thing, but uh, you can uh, bankrupt uh, your company just because you didn't think about properly managing and implementing all the security layers. And let's say, think about segmentation and uh, awareness, which environment is working how. Okay, so. Uh, I really like this uh, slide. It's uh, about airbag and what is basically uh, Azure uh, rollback. Uh, by the way, I can see that we already did one hour. <laughs> Sadly, I have to be more faster maybe. And But this doesn't matter that we cannot do second webinar to continue uh, talking on the, the main topics, right? If we don't cover everything. Uh, so. Uh, what is RBAC, uh, rollback uh, access? So rollback, uh, role based access is really um, to, 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 to follow one of the main principles, zero trust approach. Okay, I, I will repeat that one, zero trust approach. So you never give more permission to someone just because he's a good guy 
and we can trust him, right? <laughs> Smile. So no, we cannot do that. So Microsoft are saying, or let me tell it that way. It's not Microsoft, to be honest, but it was, um, you know, something which was invented long before Microsoft uh, implemented into their environment. But zero trust approach is basically saying we are giving exactly that much permissions to some user just to to be able to finish his day-to-day -day task right we are not giving more just because he wants or just because it could need it that's where rollback access is coming into place for example we are having these uh, three main uh, let's say different uh, categories of access uh, which is owner contributor and reader uh, of course I'm not limiting to this um, three, three only because uh, I mean, there are a lot, you know, a lot of them uh, as different roles, custom ones specific uh, to some services, uh, etc. But but the idea is really uh, give access only to the person um, which you know that is doing some specific work and just give him enough permissions to do his work, not more. And of course, uh, there is the, the ways to to even uh, as make them you know asking for 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 higher and uh, elevated uh, privileges every time but this is um, you know some some other tool which we will see later uh, yeah raw base access or rbec are something which we really love to see out there in azure it's really changing about our uh, security posture or or security around uh, protecting the identities of uh, Stoyan because you asked me uh, you know, about the protecting accounts. This is one of the good features, which uh, even if the account is getting compromised, if he's not having, let's say, full permissions, then uh, we are mitigating automatically um, uh, the risk uh, of this account to be uh, to being compromised and, uh, you know, the intruder can have, uh, you know, escalated some privileges no he will have uh, let's say uh, only access to some certain arrays not to, to, to whole of our environment and let's move forward yeah what we will do without our microsoft documentation i'm super happy that we have it there uh, it's here i urge you to to go and check uh, all these white papers it will really uh, boost your knowledge about uh, everything what Azure are doing with uh, all the latest um, services, uh, etc. So, next. Uh, sorry for asking. I have another less than 20 minutes, right? Or uh, maybe I can try to, to be even more faster. Uh, Stoyan Zoran, please correct me if I'm wrong. <laughs> Yeah, 15 minutes and some time to maybe for the question, yeah. 15, okay, so I will try to cover at least one big topic, right? Uh, in next few 15 minutes, I really hope that we will cover- Make it make make it 10, uh, <laughs> let's say until 4.20 our uh, local time, 3.20 Serbian. And yep. uh, we'll have 10 minutes of, to announce uh, questions and uh, follow up steps and so on. Okay, I really want to jump to the governance uh, risk and compliance then. Uh, <clears throat> uh, why governance, governance uh, you know, is important? You know, uh, we really have to understand what is happening there, right? I mean, uh, what we would do without uh, features like Azure Security Center? Uh, I already mentioned we have security groups, uh, management groups, sorry. Uh, and all these management groups, you know, really the benefits of using them but then the question is how to use them correctly, right? Because it's not only applying one root uh, management group and then what? You know, doing some change which can really ruin and destroy our environment with one simple policy change or whatever is happening there. Uh, then two really, I would, I would like to say really uh, nice services. Um, their Azure policies and Azure blueprints. Uh, please bear in mind, they, they can really boost your environment. Uh, I'm talking about the deployment. I'm talking about the uh, security, um, you know, configurations and uh, being, uh, you know, compliant with some uh, requirements, which we, you can uh, apply and um, uh, 
push into your environment with creation of uh, some services or some uh, applications. And uh, really, I, I ask, I'm, I'm asking you, uh, please check all these um, uh, services, you know, ASC, which is Azure Security Center Management Groups, Azure Policies, and Azure Blueprints. And of course, uh, there is uh, this uh, Azure um, governance, uh, governance sites where you can open and you can read more about uh, governance, how, uh, what is the vision basically of Microsoft, you know, when they're doing uh, uh, you know, all this stuff. And then I, I was, uh, I started uh, talking about uh, uh, tenants and how we are managing them with uh, all these, um, uh, manage management groups but uh, you know on on top of that uh first we, we have to understand the architecture right i mean what is good is, and what is bad and here is the uh, i'm really focusing on this bet, best practices you can see it uh, with green on the top of the screen uh, it's really best practice uh, it's not uh, what uh, microsoft uh, you know saying you have to do it but it's something like best practice for them if you do it because they saw it, it's working, and it's out there um, for many customers. And this is really the good approach, uh, which um, uh, really can boost your visibility into whole your environment. And this is basically, uh, for example, um, for, first thing in, in the middle, you know, when you uh, manage and connect all your subscription, and you have visibility into each of them, you know, you, and you're gathering all the uh, information uh, about what is happening and when. And, and this is how you understand the, the bigger picture, right? Because it's not about micro segmentation. It's about someone to put together all the micro segments into one micro segment, which can then gives the, the higher picture of what is out there and what is happening, you know all the the path from uh, um, you know when someone is um, trying to do some stuff and to break our environment uh, until the point when he already grab access and uh, until the point where where he already exfiltrated some data and then to the to the end where we manage somehow with you know big struggles after maybe one year time to understand that we had security breach one hour one year ago and we successfully mitigated this risk one year later yes one year later and you know uh, today most of the companies they, they don't even understand that you know that uh, things are happening and they have to think what if i was already you know uh, if there is already someone in, into my environment and it could be that there is someone but you just don't know about this you understand maybe uh, 20 or 30 days after um, 200 or 300 days after it, the things is happening, right? So really, uh, visibility is the key here to uh, maintain the good security posture. Uh, key responsibilities, um, let's see. Uh, yeah, segment, as I already mentioned, you know, don't give uh, full permissions to everyone just give enough per permissions or just give them enough uh, rights to, to do their jobs. Uh, I will not go into details now uh, since I don't have time, but really I ask you, please analyze and separate the different roles. You know, it's no needed uh, for the network uh, guy to have uh, uh, access to, to the VMs and vice versa, you know. Uh, there is a different roles and different per uh, persons with different purpose, you know, and uh, you know, we don't have to mix them. Uh, yeah, as always, good segmentation is the good strategy. Try to segment, but then try to overlook and understand the whole picture of this segmentation. And, you know, uh, segmentation is good when we're talking about uh, protection, but then it, it comes uh, the, the hard part where <laughs> different uh, uh, different uh, departments are trying to align on the overall security postures and this is what i have seen there you know it's really a big struggle if you don't have um, uh, a single picture on which you properly place all the departments all their responsibilities and who should be aware for what and how they're um, you know um, 
correlating and uh, combining their strengths uh, together to employ bigger security for your environment. You know, they have to know their roles and responsibilities, but also they have to be aware what the other person in the next room is doing for them, right? Because, you know, let's, let's be uh, honest here. I mean, application team will never be aware that there is a security or um, some firewall blocking their access. They will never be aware if they not hit this uh, problem that they cannot communicate with outside world or someone cannot uh, uh, see them their application, right? So uh, this is the place where they have to be at least aware what is happening, even if they're not responsible to maintain uh, the good shape uh, of this um, uh, security uh, environment, like a firewall or application firewalls or different uh, security uh, services. Ah, yeah, I mentioned about uh, root management group, uh, and also I a little bit give you idea that you have to separate different um, environments under different management groups. This will make is um, to apply different um, policies. For example, you know we are aware that uh, test environments somehow are with less um, uh, restrictive um, requirements. And that's why, you know, it's a good idea that you always separate the test from dev and from the production environment and, you know, really try to apply a root management group and maintain the good health of this root management group, try to apply the correct policies, but then really try to understand what is the best and how you want to segment all the management groups underneath the root uh, one. Um, top risk, yes, as usual, how everything starts. Uh, five more minutes and I'm finishing. Um, top risk, yeah, H how everything is happening, yeah. One day we are receiving your security, you know, your virtual machine is not patched well. And what is happening, we're having there one beeping or one red or depends of the color, most probably it's red. Um, yeah, because uh, most of the really critical stuff are red, uh, and uh, we're seeing their awards. Yeah, your VM is not patched. Uh, security administrator says, No worry, it's okay, we will patch it next uh, week or week after, or after one month, or someone will take care about this. But what if not, you know, what if someone will not care about this? And then what is happening is that we're receiving. Uh, some security incident, right? And how we are understanding when uh, some of our clients' data, in the worst case, so some of the clients' data is leaked out there in the black market, on the black market, and they're reporting back to us, you know, our data is leaked here. And it's, you know, not because of us, and it's because of your environment, because we saw uh, this correlation and stuff like this, and then, we're in big danger. Why? Because they can suit us. They can ask for financial, you know, uh, you know, some financial uh, finance to be paid, some money, and then you're in big, big trouble. And one really good thing which we have to do, I, I really am rushing right now, but uh, really uh, try to check your environments and who is the security persons uh, which is mentioned in the in the um, up where you know uh, when we are configuring our environment there is a place where we have to configure our security person and try to not put someone from finance try to not put your ceo he doesn't understand how your security is working try to put some uh, security guy who will understand if he receives some awards from microsoft what is happening with your uh, enterprise environment and why he's receiving that uh, awards at all uh, then, really quickly, I want to check uh, to, to show uh, the access reviews, uh, why they're important. You know, today's, you know, uh, there is lots of, um, uh, you know, examples uh, like this one where, you know, I'm working in one environment or one uh, department, and then I'm changing to some other departments, and then my role is changing slightly or not slightly, but totally, you know, uh, swipe, uh, swap to, to different area of expertise and then what is happening you know it's really important to properly access reviews you know don't forget that 
you know, this guy could be, you know, your ex global admin uh, or some really important administrator who has global admin permissions or he can access global admin rights. And he was really the guy who um, used to do a lot of uh, stuff in, into your environment. And then uh, if he moved away, most probably he will not need this any, any, uh, anymore, right? And then we have to really access these reviews, uh, uh, you know, uh, um, uh, uh, access and uh, check these reviews in order to properly um, manage our users and what permissions they're having. And, uh, you know, maybe we have to reduce uh, what they're having as access, but we will not be able uh, to, to see all this and to overlook it if we don't uh, check uh, occasionally uh, or every month or week uh, our, our um, you know, uh, if we're not doing these reviews uh, for for our users. Uh, I think I have a few more slides. If you allow me, Zoran Stoyan, I will be re really uh, quick here. Uh, yeah, I decided to really uh, show you this uh, uh, screenshots from Azure Security Center. It's really um, nice to, to see how, how it looks at the end, right? I mean, this is how, how uh, we can see uh, our recommendation for security, for example. Uh, and this is uh, the main security center recommendation page. Uh, on the other side, you can see here how we can mitigate and all, all the recommendations which Microsoft are giving. Of course, in the middle, we can see high or low is the priority of the, you know, of the risk which we're having there. And uh, again, some recommendations how to mitigate it. It's not always, you know, uh, Microsoft to tell you, ah, here you have some problem, but, you know, go and find a way to, to fix it. No, uh, they're telling you exactly if you have problem, how you, you can mitigate it, which is really valuable for us as a users and as a customers, because at the end, you know, it's reducing our time to really improve our security. Uh, of course, security, security posture, compliance. Yeah, why we need compliance? You know, most of you, you know, if you're working with uh, um, some government, uh, government or institutions uh, like you know, uh, which they're um, uh, they need to be compliant with some security um, uh, standards, uh, some. Uh, really like uh, HIPAA or PCI DSS, then you know that you, in order to work with them, you have to apply these compliance uh, and policies uh, over your environment. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, you cannot work or you at least you're not allowed to work with them. And uh, here where you're under uh, regulatory or compliance, um, you know, risk and of course losing uh, some deals uh, etc. And, and, and how, how basically Microsoft are doing this, they're not doing it alone, they're doing it together with uh, uh, CIS, which stands for Science Center of, uh, for Internet Security. And really they're creating amazing um, benchmarks, which uh, really they're showing you into each area how you're doing and they're showing you overall score, how you can improve the, your um, score and uh, where basically you have to focus because it's not always about the most critical, but it's also about uh, the number of uh, critical uh, services which you have to cover, right? And uh, really they, they're guiding you here very well and helping you to uh, really improve everything. Azure policies, I will not stop here. I already talked about Azure policies. Really, they, they're giving you uh, the best uh, uh, what you can get uh, from the cloud. It's, you know, if, if you want to stop something, uh, I, I urge you to, to, to try and test this po um, service, Azure policy, and just try, uh, for example, to stop the usage of, uh, let's say, the most expensive uh, VMs in the cloud. You can do this and uh, really it, it works uh, well and it really makes uh, uh, a big change if you have it there instead of not having it. A uh, few okay, more slides. So guys... Thank you, thank you <laughs> okay. Ilya, thank you. <laughs> it was yeah, breathtaking. Uh, to, be honest, <laughs> to be honest, the next uh, topic which with which we can start uh, on the next webinar is security operations. And uh, sorry that I cannot cover everything. I that, will surely really... be looking forward to that. It, it great. was a great and very intense presentation. And I hope that our, our participants enjoyed it as much as we did. 
Uh, but I believe it's time to wrap it up and invite some questions from the audience. Uh, please feel free to uh, ask any questions to us in any language. Uh, we'll be happy to assist you if uh, some of them uh, require additional investigation. We will be happy to do that as well and send you written feedback afterwards. I hope this uh, doesn't mean that uh, any language uh, is something which we are not speaking right. <laughs> to yeah, no, no. Any language. Because then you're having language. problem. <laughs> any of the supported languages yeah. <laughs> okay and we we do support quite a lot of them so uh, yeah true, true just so. give, give it a try like i said i'm not giving it up any language will be fine true definitely <sighs> zoran maybe you want to add something before uh, they uh, really pop up uh, some messages no, for the ne for the next time we should organize a non-stop live uh, uh, webinar because there is so so lot of interesting things and you know you, we, we, we must cover. I know that is really amazing and and, and lot of lot of interesting things. So I think yeah, it, uh, it was it was pretty good in in so short uh, time slot. Yeah. Yeah, I, I'm once again sorry for everything, but uh, definitely. Uh, here we are at the moment on the security operations and still we have to cover these big topics like security operations, identity, uh, networking, administration, and, uh, you know, they're really broad. There, there is so many cool stuff that they can be built. So I'm really, you know, super happy that uh, really Microsoft uh, are evolving so fast and so uh, so deep into each of these areas that they, that they really... Uh, um, they're changing the whole security uh, market out there. And I really believe that every one of us should be really happy what they're doing because it's not about only protecting our enterprise environment, but, but we saw uh, a lot of improvement into our day-to-day uh, -day use of our computers, right, at home. So they're more um, protected, they're less vulnerable, they're, they're just amazing. and. It's all about their, you know, intelligence stuff, which are from the security API graph, and uh, you know, it's all about their improvements, which they're, uh, you know, doing. So I would like okay. to, uh, yeah, I would like also to ask our our, our colleagues and, and customers. Uh, we will send the questionnaire, and uh, we would like just to kindly ask you to 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 fulfill this questionnaire, which will be sent uh, from our sides and. After that, you can you will receive the uh, link uh, uh, for this recorded uh, session and of course uh, presentation. But uh, also, if you have uh, uh, any 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 concern, any question, you can raise it now or or afterwards. Of course, we are we will be at your disposals on uh, on our emails and uh, you can uh, ask uh, uh, anything uh, what what you want uh, in a, in the following times. Of course. Yeah, I will hold on, on, on this slide just because uh, I really didn't get into many details, but uh, as Zoran mentioned, uh, feel free to use uh, this um, uh, you know, offer from Zoran to uh, send us an email with all the questions uh, which really matters for your organization. You know, something which really bother you, something which really can boost and improve uh, the overall security posture of your um, environment or your company or your uh, whatever, you know, and your environment. So don't hesitate, write to us and we will be trying to answer in the next few days, uh, uh, you know, to reply with uh, our answers uh, to, to all your questions. Of course, of course, if you are planning some security project and we know that that it will be some plans we can help uh, and we can support, we can uh, uh, make some kind of uh, scenario for each topic. So we are really at your disposal and in, in, in any in any needed uh, topics or challenge or problems or everything, really, really uh, every kind of support you will need. We are, we are, we are here for, uh, uh, for you. Okay, so with this, uh, apparently there would be no questions, not in, let's say, synchronous mode as we speak. Uh, we'll be waiting for your feedback, and I would like once again to thank to our passionate speaker, Ilya Ilyev. Thank and, you to the uh, attendees as well. Yeah, thank you a lot for the most precious insights we received into the 
security topics and concerning Asia and basically organizational protection. Uh, let's wrap it up and uh, see you next time. Uh, you will find the announcement for next webinars via email invitation or on our respective websites. So by bye the bye. end, thanks, thanks a lot for your time and have a nice day. We'll be in touch. Nice Thank day. You. Have a nice evening. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye-bye. Cheers.